Hey guys, John here again with Forward Talk. I just wanted to come in today and talk to you about uh, some current events that are taking place in the world. I would imagine that each and every one of you have heard about the attacks upon Israel by Hamas. And of course, there are a lot of rumblings in uh, the YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook world about the prophetic implications of these uh, events that are taking place. Before I get there, um, I just want to say thank you for tuning in and watching this video. If you at any point would like to support us, uh, you can do so uh, by visiting uh, our Cash App. I will have that link in the description. Uh, we are church planners, uh, full-time college student, um, just beginning my MA in Biblical Languages. Um, and of course, I want to continue to do more and more of these videos. I know it's been uh, a little bit since I've done it, but hopefully I can become more consistent and frequent. But if you would like to support any aspect of our uh, work in ministry, you can do so by uh, visiting uh, the Cash Out link in the description. However, we are here today to uh, talk briefly about some of the world events that are taking place with um, Hamas and Israel, the conflict between the Palestinians and the, and the uh, Israelis. Of course, uh, all of the prophecy pundits, particularly those who are pre-mill, dispensational, <clears throat> uh, always tend to look at these events uh, as having end-time prophetic significance. Um, sometimes uh, I refer to some of these prophecy pundits as, uh, refer to it as newspaper eschatology. They hold the Bible in one hand, the newspaper in the other hand. And uh, they see where they can make current events fit into biblical prophecy. But um, I come from a, I hold just a little bit different perspective on eschatology than that. So I am not seeing any particular significance to these events in biblical prophecy in terms of end time. Um, I don't see them as having any significance to ushering in a tribulation, uh, the Antichrist, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Um, I just see it as the natural natural consequence of uh, Middle Middle Eastern conflict between Israel and and the Palestinians, uh, and so Israel and uh, you know their their enemies there in the Middle East. And of course, there is biblical roots to the ideology behind the conflict in terms of uh, to who does the to whom does the land belong, et cetera. But in terms of um, si the significance of uh, impending apocalyptic doom, I don't think there is anything significant to see here um, in 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 those terms. And uh, I think part of the um, part of the uh, conflict comes into how one understands the nation of Israel and the promises of God to Israel, how Israel uh, qualifies for those promises, and what that looks like. And so uh, I think for me, it, 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 when you take a look at the Old Testament and you see God's terms and conditions for Israel as his covenant people, as well as the terms and conditions that he placed on inhabiting the land, was that uh, the, God required of Israel belief and obedience in order to inhabit the land, in order to live in his covenant and under the, under the blessings of the covenant and the protection of the land and their dwelling in the land. And so if they go into unbelief and they rebel, God himself says he will drive them out of the land. And so he will drive them out of the land because of disobedience. Um, and the only way that they qualify to live under the blessings of, of Yahweh in the Old Testament was to live in obedience and repentance and faith uh, toward Yahweh. And so as long as Israel is not living in obedience and faith, then they are not under the covenant blessing of, of, uh, of God. And so the current nation state of Israel is far from being an, a believing, obedient nation. Uh, the current nation state of Israel is an unbelieving nation, and therefore do not uh, live under the covenantal blessings uh, of, of God upon uh, his people as described in the Old Testament. And so if Israel is going to, as a nation state, if the nation of Israel is going to live under the blessing and favor of God, they have to come into covenant alignment uh, with God. And at this point in history, that has to that has to come about under the new 
covenant. So in other words, what Israel has to believe in order to be under the blessing, covenantal blessing of, of God, is they have to come to believe uh, in the new covenant. They have to place faith in Messiah. They have to place faith in God in Christ. And so they have to believe the gospel. And so, uh, of course, you see all the hashtags um, on the various social media platforms. I stand with Israel, pray for Israel. And uh, of course, I do pray for Israel. But the thing that I rarely see on any of these posts is anyone talking about pray for the Palestinians, pray for Hamas, pray for uh, both sides of the conflict. And what I'm praying for is not for a disobedient, rebellious, unbelieving nation to have the blessing and favor of God upon their unbelief. What I'm praying for is the repentance and the restoration of Israel in the new covenant. I'm praying for the repentance and restoration not only of Israel, but of Hamas, both Hamas, uh, the Palestinians, Israel, needs the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm praying for. I pray for Israel. I pray for Hamas. I pray for the Palestinians. I pray for the Middle East. I pray for the entire world. And my prayer for all of them is identical. Not that God would place his, his blessings upon any people or nation in a state of unbelief, but that God would turn their hearts to repentance. And uh, I believe that God is going to do that for the nation of Israel. I just don't believe he's going to do it apart from his church. He's not going to do it apart from Acts 2, Acts 2.38. He's not going to do it apart from the gospel. He's not going to do it apart from faith um, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. He's not going to do it apart, again, from the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I pray for Israel, but here's what I pray for Israel. I pray for her repentance. I pray for God to turn um, her heart to him in repentance once again. I pray uh, for Hamas. I pray for uh, God to, to bring about for his glory uh, the repentance of the Palestinian people. And um, so I'm praying the same prayer for the Palestinians, the same prayer for Hamas that I am praying for Israel. I'm praying for repentance. I'm praying for the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ to shine in their hearts. I'm praying that both the Palestinians and Hamas will see the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is what we should be praying for Israel. This is what we should be praying for the Middle East. The only peace for the Middle East is in the Prince of Peace, a Jewish Messiah uh, that was born in Bethlehem uh, uh, right around 2,000 years ago. This is the only peace, the Prince of Peace, the King of Peace. Hallelujah. And so this is what I'm praying for the Middle East. This is what I'm praying for Israel. I'm praying that Israel will come to faith in their Messiah. And this is the truth. This is the real thing that we ought to be praying for. And uh, if if all you can do is find it in your heart to pray for Israel because of some misunderstanding of land covenants and land promises, uh, and, and you're totally okay with the killing of, of innocent Palestinians, and you're okay with the slaughter of, uh, of, of Palestinians, as well as the rape and murder and slaughter of of, of um of Israelites, of Israeli, the Jewish people, um, both of those, both of those things are wrong. And so we want to pray for both sides that God will shine um, the light of the gospel in their hearts. And this is our prayer. And this ought to be the prayer of every true believer.